I'll just go through some configuration in Slicer. Um, this is where you set up the STL, STL files in Slicer, which we're doing in Repetia, so you don't need to worry about this page. Under Print Settings, these are the things that you're going to tend to change based on what you're printing. I uh, usually 0.3 for layer height. First layer height gives you the uh, option of doing a first layer that's a little bit thicker, maybe to stick it a little bit better, or to help even out any inconsistency in the level of the print bed. Um, parameters, you know. 3 is usually good, although it also has this option of generate extra perimeters when needed. So if there's a gradual curve over the top corner of something that needs more perimeters to prevent any gapping, it'll try and detect that and add extra ones in just for that section. So if you have a part that really needs 5 perimeters to really come out well, but you don't need 5 perimeters around the whole print slowing everything down, um, Slicer will try to accommodate that. Solid layers, generally you're going to need three to get a good flat surface. And uh, infill, of course, is variable depending on, you know, if you want strength or if you don't need, you know, if you just want speed of your print. Uh, infill, every blank layers, this is something that is good for if you're doing um, like a 0.1 millimeter layer height. Uh, it can take a long time because that takes three times as long as 0.3 millimeter layer heights. Um, but you can save some time by not printing infill on every single one of those layers. So maybe you can do three layers each at 0.1 millimeter and then it'll go back and do infill at 0.3 millimeters thick on every third layer. Uh, so that's just the way to, to try and save a little bit of time when you're doing a high resolution print. Speed. Um, just like uh, the defaults in, in Skeenforge, go for 50, although for bridges, um, maybe you want to go up to 70. Bridges are where um, it's going to draw filament across empty space from one spot to another. And if you speed it up a little bit, it'll help stretch that filament and keep it straight over that space. Um, if it goes slow, then that filament will tend, tend to sag. So speed up your bridges. and. Um, the rest of these kind of keep the same. First layer speed, this is another thing. Maybe you can slow down that first layer and that'll help it stick. Uh, typically, I think it can do just fine going at the same speed. Skirt is uh, an outline that it'll draw around the object to help get the plastic flowing in case some of it's oozed out. You need to fill the barrel up again so that when it starts printing um, the object, it's the, the plastic's already flowing and there's no gap at the beginning. Um, you can set how many times it goes around that outline, how far it is from the object. Uh, if you're printing something that takes up most of the bed, um, then you'll want to keep a close eye on this so it's not trying to print the skirt uh, you know, out past the edge of it. Skirt height, uh, one, one layer, but if you want you can actually build up a whole shell around what you're printing uh, if that's what you want to do by doing the higher. Brim is kind of like skirt, except that's an outline that actually touches the edge of the object. It's uh, an outline of the object and it spreads it out and creates sort of a brim like a hat. And this is to help if if you're having trouble with uh, warping and peeling up uh, off of the bed, especially on corners, um, the brim will help give it a little bit more surface to, to stick down. Um, if you're printing something that's a very small footprint, then this can help create a wider area to, to stick to the bed. Support material depends entirely on the thing you're printing. If you have any overhangs that'll need some material underneath of it, um, then turn on generate support. And uh, uh, pattern spacing, the wider you do this, the um, easier it'll be to pull it away. You don't want your support to be too strong or else it'll be really hard to remove. Uh, you could go rectilinear or honeycomb. I think rectilinear is probably better just because it's probably going to be less plastic. And then down in advanced, um, extrusion width is the length of the the width of the actual thread that's being drawn. And um, 0.42 is pretty good, especially for uh, 0.3 millimeter layer height. Um, you can let Slicer calculate that automatically by leaving it zero, but then you never know exactly what it's doing. So I like to define all of these. And down at support material, I have that set to 60%. So that the support will be done thinner and finer 
than the rest of the print. Again, this is a way to make it uh, much easier to remove and um, it's less likely to, to stick and, and leave you know, blobs and ridges and things behind. Bridge flow ratio. Um, again, this is something maybe you want to turn down a little bit so when it's pulling filament out over empty space, um, it's not pushing out a lot of plastic that's just going to droop and sag. And then over on filament settings, your filament diameter is not necessarily 1.75. You should measure this at the caliper and get as an exact uh, measurement as you can possibly get. Uh, extrusion multiplier uh, could start out with one, but this is something you can dial in for your particular printer and the plastic that you're using. Uh, I covered this in the uh, in the uh, extruder calibration blog and also the flow settings blog. And then, uh, of course, uh, temperatures for the first layer. You can set that at a higher temperature to help stick. Um, I've been printing a little bit low lately because I was trying to print some very small layers and I wanted them to cool a lot quicker. Uh, but typically, 195 is a little bit better. On bed temperature, keep these zero. Uh, if you actually do set a bed temperature, then it's going to wait for the bed to reach that temperature before it prints. And even after the bed reaches that temperature, it'll keep waiting and it'll wait forever until you reset the printer. So set those to zero and just set the, uh, the temperature manually and handle that. Cooling is for small layers. Um, if you have a small object where each layer takes a little bit of time, then the next layer above that gets printed while the one below is still soft and melty. Um, we don't have any fan control but you can set so that it'll slow down the print if the layer time is below a certain threshold. And then the minimum print speed will say if it's slowing down to spread out the layer over this minimum time, it's not going to go any slower at least than what you set as the minimum speed. And of course this depends entirely on, on what you're printing. For printer settings, set 150 for the bed size, 00 for the print center, print center. All of this is actually going to be handled on Repetier custom g-code. Uh, very simple. All we're doing basically is g28 means to home and um, and Repetier is going to do all the rest but this is the reason why we needed that new firmware because Repetier figures out where the printer is based on home. The standard solid doodle start code um, just runs extruder 200 millimeters um, in either direction knowing that it's going to hit the end stop eventually but uh, if you do that with Repetier, it's going to read that 200 millimeter move and place your G-code way out in the middle of nowhere because it doesn't know that an end stop is going to get hit. And then down here under extruder 1, you um, need to set the nozzle diameter to 0.35. And this is also where the retraction settings are. This is for if um, the extruder needs to pause for any reason or stop extruding. Um, it'll actually pull the filament backwards to help uh, combat any oozing because even when it stops extruding plastic is going to still run out the nozzle and create strings. Um, so these are good actually settings to start. Actually I'd recommend 20 or 30. Um, still playing with these. Minimum travel after retraction. This tells it how far it has to move without extruding before it'll turn on retraction. Um, mostly go with these settings and and go from there. Turn up length if uh, you find you're still getting a lot of stringing and oozing. So a good idea to, to save uh, any, any changes that you've made. And now you can pick those all out of here. If you got one set for a phone or print at 0.1 millimeter layer heights, I can just grab that right there. I don't have to go into the dialog at all once I have a bunch of settings that, that I like the way they work.